glory to God. Just bless the Lord. Come on and give us some more worship. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him, Sister Grace. You can do all But fail. Never lost the battle. Never lost the battle.
bless our witnesses tonight that he's done great things today. He has, I wish I had about two or three witnesses that know God has done great things. Hallelujah. Let's lift your hands so you know he's done great things for you. Let's raise your hand if you know God has done great things for you. Hallelujah. I often think about the old stories that he used to tell us and the things that I've experienced myself. When I was growing up, we had storms just like we have now. But a tornado used to be really frightening to me. We had tornadoes in uh, Hamilton, Ohio, where I grew up. And often, it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but often it would blow the power out for a really long time. We didn't have any power, and we had to go in the basement. And we had one of those big old houses. When you, it wasn't a lived-in basement at all. And you go in the basement, it was kind of scary down there. Well, not kind of, it was very scary. And um, I remember my dad, I thought he was so brave, because he'd go out there and see was it safe enough? He would do something. I don't know what all he did, but he would go up outside and look at the weather to see was it safe for the family to come back up the steps, come back upstairs. And uh, he would be listening to the radio, listening to the news announcer. And uh, when it was time, we would come back upstairs. It was the scariest thing to me. And I thought he was so brave and reminded me uh, navigating storms in our own life. Navigating spiritual storms. In fact, that's my title today. Navigating life's storms. And this is a topic that I come to time and time again, but I think it's important that we learn to navigate spiritual storms. So what I want you to do, if you have a cell phone, go ahead and put it on airplane mode unless you're using it to record the sermon or using it to take notes. 
go ahead and if you have any devices i want to tune in just for a little while don't let your neighbor distract you because god is speaking to you personally when we are listening to the message he speaks to me at home when i'm preparing these messages for me personally and then he speaks to me again while i'm preaching it but when you're hearing it it's personal my topic is navigating life storms. One of the characteristics of life is you're going to go through hardships. Even as a young person, no matter what age bracket that you fall into, you're going to go through storms. Turn to Matthew 23 and Matthew 8 and 23. Matthew 8 and 23. Matthew 8 and 23. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. I'm going to ask you some questions here momentarily, so I want you to be tuned in. Matthew 8 and 23. First of all, the first question is, do you have it? If you have it, raise your hand. You have Matthew 8 and 23. Let me see your hand. Matthew 8, 23. I, know, I see most people have it. All right. That's the first question. All right. Help me out back there, girls. And again, even in the odd, even, even everybody in the whole uh, sanctuary should have their phone on airplane mode, not just the audience. I want everybody to tune in. This is not a time to text or anything. If you're taking notes, I, I understand. Matthew 8, chapter 23. Because what happens is when you, when the sermon goes forth, and my students do it in class, when the sermons go forth, and you that come, became a habit of getting on social media, or texting, you miss what God is saying to you. So I want everybody, that's why I say that. That's why I say that. You have to do things like that in the 21st century. It ain't necessarily that you're a bad person. It just sometimes it becomes the time to tune out and, and check your messages. Uh, Matthew 8, 23. If you haven't, stand up. Stand up. Let's read so I can move forward to my message. And when he had entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. This is Jesus. Okay, he had 12. How many disciples did Jesus have? 12. I said it just now, yep. Yeah. But he, and he, had, he originally had 12, but he has more now because the Christian, you are his disciples. Disciples means following Christ. So they're going to follow Jesus into the boat where Jesus knew that there was going to be a storm. He already knew there was going to be a storm. They didn't know. Look at verse 24. Behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. That word tempest in the King James means a, a big storm. Storm at sea could have been a hurricane or something like that. Insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Jesus went to sleep in the boat during the storm. Christ went to sleep in the boat during the storm. That's, amazing, that's an amazing detail. And his disciples came to him and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we perish. It was so bad, look at verse 25. It was so bad that they cried out, Lord, save us. Okay, I'm only gonna read a couple verses. We're in Matthew chapter eight, verse 23. We're in Matthew chapter eight, verse 23. And he says unto them, why are ye fearful? He says that to us. Sometimes the Lord will bless you, whether it's financially, uh, health-wise, or spiritually, but we, we have a habit of forgetting. And so the Lord is asking us, why are we fearful in the midst of the storm? Right now, somebody is in the storm right now. Somebody might be just coming out of a storm, but somebody might be in a spiritual storm right now. We're gonna talk about that. Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. There was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, verse 27, Matthew chapter 8, verse 27, what manner, what manner of man 
is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him. You can sit down, be seated in the presence of God. The sea and the wind obey the Lord. The wind of Satan, the wind of temptations, the wind of turmoil and sickness, whatever the case may be, has to obey the Lord. Each and every person in here is going through something, maybe something minor. Some people are going through something great. And when you walk in the sanctuary, people can look at you and not really know what you're going through. One of the biggest challenges of 21st century is being misunderstood. Misunderstandings causes people to leave a job. Misunderstandings causes people to retreat from society. Misunderstandings causes clinical depression. Misunderstandings cause anxiety disorder. Misunderstandings cause suicide or homicide. It grows. Sometimes Satan and his demons use this misunderstanding to cause turmoil. But God understands you. You just have to give him that opportunity to work in your life. I want you to stand if you've ever been in the midst of a tornado. If you ever experienced a tornado at home, you've been at, I want to see, come on and stand. Come on and stand, I can see you. All right. Those that have seen a tornado or been a, a witness of it. Was it fun? It wasn't fun at all, was it? That's a storm in your life. One of the characteristics about a tornado is that it's this uncertainty. You don't know when it's going to stop, and then there's always somebody that said, I seen it down the street. I seen, it, uh, <laughs> I seen a tornado in Walnut Hills. <laughs> Touchdown, and it makes you nervous and scared. And you can be seated, you can be seated. One of the characteristics that anybody, any of these individuals that have been in a tornado is uncertainty. Okay? I want you to write this down right here, if you can. Write this down. You can write on your phone without, if you gotta turn it back on, that's fine. But I want you to write this down. God is still present in the midst of uncertainty. God is still present in the midst of uncertainty. God is still present in the midst of uncertainty. That's one of the takeaways I want you to glean from this message today. God is still present in the midst of uncertainty. In our text today, we get a glimpse of Christ and his disciples being caught in the middle of a sea storm. Out of the Sea of Galilee, where the storms were sudden, often unannounced and intense. One of the characteristics that's the same, exact same as Christ's day as it is today is storms. Physical storms I'm talking about right now. Ain't no different today. We have, we had storms in ancient times. We have storms now. And the characteristic about the storms at the Sea of Galilee, they were sudden and intense. Sometimes your life can be going very well from your opinion. You got a raise on the job. Your rent is paid up. Your bills are, your electric bill pay, your water bill pay, you got gas in your tank, you got money for McDonald's. Then all of a sudden, here comes a storm. You see a little storm, flat tire. Go in there and get your meal, go into Subway, get your sandwich, come back out, your tire flat. Small storm. You thought you had gas, you went to work, you come back out, and you don't eat in your car like, eh, 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 And all the people coming out looking, your boss see you. That's a little storm. A small storm, you going to work, you thought you had a clean outfit, and lo and behold, the one you thought was clean got ketchup stains on it. You gotta figure it out. That's life. 
whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to go through storms. It's false teaching that when you become saved, everything is going to be all right. You're going to never have a problem. You're going to be rich. You're going to ball out every day. You're going to have everything laid out for you. Sometimes that's our expectation. But you're going to go through. The difference is going through with Christ on the boat. The storm chaser is on the boat with you. He can speak to the winds and the waves of your life. And this is not abstract. This comes right down in your kitchen. The storm that's going on right now on the job. The storm that's going on right now on the bus. In your apartment complex. In your house. God is in the midst. Sometimes we don't just know how to access him. But we don't remember to access him. Praise the Lord. They say amen if you wake. If you wake. The storm in Jesus' day reminds me when we were in Alabama on Gulf Shores with my family, and it was a beautiful, perfect day. This is how life can be, too. <laughs> a beautiful, perfect day. We was down there by the beach. It was warm. We was enjoying ourselves. I kid you not, we had no indication. And in seconds, it was a torrential downpour. In seconds, it was like we got slammed. We weren't dressed for the occasion at all. No umbrellas, no raincoats, whatever the case may be. And we got completely drenched. And we had to hurry up and get back home and get, up, get under a roof. That's how life can be. Your life can be going right along. And I talked about the small storms, or it can be a big storm. You get to the job, they say, we don't need you no more. Or you get a phone call from the doctor that's not good news. Or you get a call from the principal at school, those that have children. And it's like, man, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been in the word. What's wrong? There's nothing wrong, you're gonna go through. <laughs> Sometimes, I'm gonna get to that part too, in terms of self-inflicted storms. But there, sometimes you're just going to go through life. And what I want you to do is hold on to God today, right now. And don't let your relationship be a Sunday to Sunday relationship. But seek God during the week. It makes it a lot easier, young people. Don't come to church and then get around your friends and do the exact same thing. But let God build you up. You got to go to school. You know how they act at school. They're cursing, they're sleeping around, boyfriends, girlfriends. Now the boys were boys, now the girls were girls. They vaping, they smoke weed, they drinking. You can't even smell vapes anymore. It used to be when people were smoking weed, the principal could smell it. But nowadays, people are vaping, and they got even sometimes uh, THC, the uh, Delta 8. You can't even detect it. And then they even got the edibles, where it looks like gummy bears. And they sitting up there high as a kite, can't smell it. We're in the last days. And young people, you guys are around all of this stuff. You're gonna have to make a stand that you stand with God. At some point, you can't straddle the fence. You gotta, you gotta take that stand. It ain't easy. It wasn't easy in my day. My friends had guns. I seen them, I would drive by, we coming from church. I see my friend on the block. I didn't know what he was, I was so young, I didn't know what he was doing. He was hustling and selling dope. He had on nice clothes. Like, why, where they, how can they afford that? We always have pressure. It's always been temptation. You're gonna have to make a stand as a young person that even in the midst of the storm, you're gonna stand. But you gotta access the storm chaser. The Bible says in our text, that Jesus spoke to the storm. He rebuked it, specifically in verse 26. He rebuked the storm. He said, storm, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Tornado, get out of my yard. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Hurricane, get out of my seat. <laughs> the Bible don't say what he said, but ooh, it must have been very powerful. 
Because the disciples got quiet. They began to talk to themselves. Who is this man that can rebuke that the, the winds in the sea obey him? The sea said, yes, sir. The sea of Galilee said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, boss. They obeyed him. He spoke to the storm. Hallelujah. Hurricane, get out of my sea. Tornado, get out of my yard. Hallelujah. Tsunami, get out of my creek. Hallelujah. Devil, get out of my house. Spirit of lust, get out of my life. Spirit of addiction, get out of my life. Spirit of depression, get out of my life. Spirit of anxiety, I'm going to have peace in my life. Clinical depression, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia, I'm healed. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to the storm. ADD, I rebuke you, and I'm healed. My mind is clear in Jesus' name. We have to take what Jesus did and, 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 and go by that. Don't go outside of that. Jesus was asleep during the storm. Sleep indicates that he wasn't concerned about the storm. When God would begin to bless you, you have a good night's sleep. Somebody been losing sleep. She don't have the peace. But God's going to give you peace. Hallelujah. He's going to give your sleep back. Sleep indicates that the Lord had it under control. He took a nap. I'm closing out. Natural storms going to occur until the Lord come back. You're going to either go to heaven and talk to the saints. You're going to either go to heaven through the grave or you're going to go to heaven through the rapture. Whether you go to heaven next week, we don't know when tomorrow's promise. Whether the Lord call your name next year in 2025. Nobody plans to pass away. But I have heard people say, the Lord, the Lord say, well, I'm going to this is it. I've heard people testify that. <laughs> you don't know when your time coming. Don't walk around here arrogant like you got a monopoly on life. The, the thing you can do is pack your spiritual suitcase and be ready. <laughs> Quit playing with God. Quit playing with the devil. Pack your spiritual suitcase and walk around with it packed. It could be five years from now. It could be 10 years from now. It could be 20 years from now. I done preached so many funerals, but one day they're going to be singing my name. See, singing over me. They're going to be singing over me. I don't know what song they're going to sing. Hallelujah. But I'm going to be in heaven smiling because I'm going to be ready. Hallelujah. You don't know what tomorrow is going to hold for you. And so young people, when you go to school, be saved. Be a Christian. Don't be a hypocrite. It ain't easy. I didn't say it was easy. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to lead me. Be somebody. Make a difference as a Christian. Life might not be perfect, don't look at the pastor and say, oh, his life is perfect. He got it going on. I live in the same world you live in. Hallelujah. I just don't carry it around. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me close up. I started to say, as long as you're on this earth, we're going to have storms. We're going to have thunderstorms that's severe. We're going to have heat waves. In the same way you have natural storms, we're going to have spiritual storms. You're going to have them. Don't let them surprise you. The Bible says, think not it's strange when these things come your way. Don't think it's strange. Momentarily, I'm going to open up the altar. 
And I want you to turn your mind towards receiving from God. I want everybody shake themselves like this. Shake yourself. In fact, stand up and do it. I know y'all tired of me telling y'all. I'm a teacher. I have y'all do this to wake up. <laughs> you can do like this. Do one of these. All right. You're doing that in the natural now. We're doing it in the spiritual. You can be seated. Thank you. I want you to get the mindset of being blessed. Do you know you have to be in position to be blessed? Emotionally and spiritually, you have to be in the right mindset for the Lord to do something for you. Sometimes we have a resistant mindset. That's the worst. Well, I'm fine with the way I am. Or we have a posture of, well, I'm ready to go. It's already late. I'll get blessed next time. But let this time be the time you get to get blessed. The song says, there's peace in the midst of the storm. When the world that I've been living in collapses at my feet, and when my life is all tattered and torn, though I've been windswept, I've been battered, and I'll cling to his, to his cross. I'll find peace in the midst of the storm. There is peace in the midst of the storms. Toss line. There's an anchor. There's a rock to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel. So I feel. No alarm, he'll give me peace in the midst of the storm. Oh, there is peace in the midst of the storm. Toss light. There's an anchor, there's a rock, come on and stand, to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel, so I feel no alone. He'll In the midst of the storm. 